ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರ ಮಷೀನ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇ ಆರ್ಸ್ ಆಫರಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ರಾಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಡೇ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ವಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ವೆರಿಯಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಸ್ ಕಂಪೋನೆಂಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಬಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವರ್ಚುವಲ್ ಮಷೀನ್ ಇನ್ ಅಜಿಯೋರ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಅಜಿಯೋರ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಯುನಿ ಟು ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಅ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಸೊ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಲಾಜಿಕಲ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಅರ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಸೇ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಎ ಕಂಟೈನರ್ ವೇ ಆರ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಪುಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ವಿಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಯೋರ್ ಮೈಕ್ರೋಸಾಪ್ ಐಸೋರ್ ಇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಎ ನೇಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾಬಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸಿ ಶಾಪ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕೀಪ್ ವರಿಯಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಸ್ ವರಿಯಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಫೇಸಸ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ ವೇ ವಟ್ ಅವರ್ ದ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಬಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಎ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ then inside a resource group you know you have to create a virtual network so obviously a virtual machine would be the part of a virtual network further that virtual network we can divide into the sub network so we use over there subnet even if you will find out in your own company also in your own company we having the company network and the team wise they having the sub network so that sub network having a subnet so let's say your hr team having the can be on different network your internal it team can be on the different network so this is the way how the sub networking can be done apart from the network you will find out we having a operating system disk where we install our virtual machine os so it can be a windows server os it can be the linux os and that disk we keep in a storage account so what happening here whatever the things we are going to store in the cloud that would be the part of the storage account so inside the storage account we can have other virtual machine hard disk so we having the vht1 we having the vht2 we having the vht0 this so these are the virtual machine hard disk so these are the data disk 1 data disk 2 and the virtual machine having a temporary disk as well the temporary disk it occupied from the physical host so what are the host we are using behind the scene to create that virtual machine so that host provide the temporary storage so by default when you will create a virtual machine you will get with your virtual machine only two things one is operating system disk you will get and the second one is a temporary storage for data disk you need to create the disk separately store it somewhere then attach to the virtual machine so data disk you will not get by default by default you will get only two things operating system disk and the temporary disk so we having a one storage account for storing the virtual machine hard disk and we having the another storage account as well for storing the diagnostic logs so so if you are willing to diagnose the things so somewhere we need to store the logging if let's say today your virtual machine was starting fine it was running fine but suddenly it stopped running so from where you will diagnose the issue so this is the diagnostic logs from where you can diagnose the issue apart from the hard disk and the storage account we having the public ip as well so public ip is required whenever you are going to access anything which you have deployed on the virtual machine from the internet because virtual machine we cannot access from the internet if that virtual machine is not connected to a public ip and and that public ip is connected to an ic network interface card so we having the nic which is providing us the accessibility of the virtual machine through public ip to internet so let's say we have deployed a asp.net core application on the virtual machine that application i am willing to access so obviously it it should expose through the network so how how the expose can be done it can be done with the help of public ip so these are the various components we are having in a virtual machine so when i will create my virtual machine all the things you will find out so let's create the virtual machine and see how these are going to be created so make sure you are having the microsoft azure account so what i will do here i'm just going to create few resources let me delete uh, my existing resources uh, what we already having here okay let's leave it so resource group you can create either first or either at the time of creating that particular resource resource group can be created so now let's create a our virtual machine resource so here we have been the option to create the windows server virtual machine we have been option to create the ubuntu server virtual machine even you can make a search from here also so when you are making the search for virtual machine you are having the option let's open to server open to server so these are the options you are getting over there when you are searching for the virtual machine so let me create here a windows server virtual machine now it is asking for the subscription this is my subscription i'm using then define the resource group so here there is option to create a new resource group 
define your resource group name let's say dnt101 is my resource group name then define your virtual machine name so let's say i'm defining my virtual machine name dnt vm is my virtual machine name it can be anything then you can select the reason so here reason we decide based upon our based upon the users on a website let's say we have created a product for the indian user so make sure you have deployed your virtual machine in the india region so benefit of creating the virtual machine the india region is it that would be not latency issues because if you are going going to access a server from the us so there would be latency if the people are accessing from the india so based upon your traffic please select the region so i'm selecting here uh, my india because i'm creating it for india so in india we have been the west india we have been the south india we have been the central india so based upon your requirement you can decide the reason so let's say i'm in here west india that is in mumbai then from here you can select the your server image so we have been here windows server image we have been the ubuntu we have been the red hat we have been the oracle linux so we even we have been the windows 10 pro as well so i'm just going to get started with windows server 2016 that's fine and then here we have been the option of size what are the size you needed so these are the sizes that are available even the pricing is also available so we have been the standard size with two uh, virtual cpu 4 gb ram and we have been the other sizes as well even from here you can see see all the sizes so here you can look at what are the other sizes are available and every here you will find out we have been the family general purpose and we have been the b series machine e series machine d series machine and this is a support for virtual cpu ram data disk then input output support temporary storage and we have been the premium storage support ssd support and this is the pricing over there so i'm just going to select this b2s in b2s i will get two virtual cpu 4 gb ram and four data disk so at least you should have 4 gb ram to start the things properly so this one i'm selecting here and then define here your username so as a username let's i'm putting here sys admin password let's say dnt at the rate 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 it is my password then confirm password dnt at the rate 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 it then we having the option do you want to open any port because what are the port we have being at virtual machine all are blocked by default so public access if you are willing to provide so from here we have been the option with what are the various port you are willing to open at the vm level so for taking the rdp so that we can access it from a local machine i'm just going to open the port number 3389 this is a known port for the rdp connection we can open here the port 80 because when we will run our application on the virtual machine we run it with the alpha web server so web server having the port 80 for http protocol web server having the port 8443 for the https so these two ports also i'm opening at the machine level so that through the web server when i will connect i can access them so the selected ports i'm opening here then we having option here for azure hybrid benefit so microsoft also providing the option if you already having the license of the windows server so that existing license you can mention after creating the virtual machine you don't need to pay for the license fee so in that case the the virtual machine cost will reduce because what are the virtual machine you create that include the windows server license like say whatever the operating system you are using so i don't have any windows server license key so i'm not selecting this checkbox i'm leaving it as it is so they will charge for the license key also then we having the option here for mentioning the disk which type of disk you need so we having option here hdd we having the ssd we having the premium ssd so one of the option you can select here so right now ssd is recommended because we having the read and write operation faster in ssd as compared to the hdd then here you can define the data disk option if you are willing to attach any data disk because i said in this picture by default you will have a operating system disk by default you will have the temporary storage data disk either we can define at the time of creating the virtual machine either we can define later on so i will attach the data disk later on let's go ahead with the empty data disk then we have been the option here for networking now in the next step so here we need to create a virtual network even if you will look at in the diagram as, as well 
so far we have created the resource group now we are just going to create the virtual network then we create the subnet then we create the public ip disk also we have created so far where we define the operating system disk type as ssd so here this is my network name dnt101 dash vnet so it is new because it's a new network it is creating then we have being a subnet so every network we further divide into the multiple sub network this is the masking rule they define over there 10.0.0.0 then shall as 24 so 24 means here if you are looking at we having here shall as 24 so this is a masking over there so masking they have defined like this way 24 so 24 means the ip address is actually made of with 8 bit so 8 plus 8 plus 8 Plus eight, so it is a thirty-two bit IP because there are four digit one, two, three, four. So for one digit it is a eight bit, second digit it's a eight bit again, third digit it's a eight bit again, four digit it's eight bit again. So when I'm mentioning here twenty-four, it means the first three digit would be fixed here. So it is deciding the range of the IP addresses. So now here range would be like this way: point one, point two. Point three, and it will go to the two five five. But if I mention here, let's say sixteen. So in this case, first two digit would be fixed. After that, the digit can change. So it can be like this way. So now IP range would increase. Now it can be here zero point one. It can be here let's say one point one. So I can change now last two digit in the range two point two like this way. Because now it is sixteen. Previously it was twenty-four. So in, the, so in that case, I can change only last digit. So this is the way how the masking is going to be created. So this is the meaning of shellless twenty-four. Then we having the option here, the public IP. So we need a public IP to connect it. So this is the public IP it is creating for us. Then we having the network security group NSG. So a network security group is just like we having a firewall at the machine level where we define some rules so that the people can not access our computer from anywhere similar way we having the network security group where we define some rules so that uh, what are the various port you are willing to open at the network level what are the port you are willing to uh, you know restrict so such thing we can define in with the help of nsg over there and here we, this setting we have already done we already open few ports so that we can access the website which we hosted at the virtual machine and how we can connect to the virtual machine over there then we having the option here for load balancing so right now we are creating only one virtual machine so when you are creating the more than one virtual machine that time when to define the load balancer setting so load balancer i'm not defining so let's go ahead then we having the option here for monitoring as i said if you are willing to monitor the thing so need to create a separate storage account for diagnostic so here if i will enable here diagnostic it will create a one storage account with the name dnt101 diag which is for diagnostic purpose if you will if i will uncheck this one it will not create a separate storage account for diagnostic so i have not enabled the diagnostic i'm leaving it as it is and here it is looking for a managed storage account so when it is coming to the storage account we have being actually two types of storage account managed and unmanaged so every storage account having few limitations so limitation in terms of storage limitation in terms of bandwidth so if you will use the managed storage so you don't need to worry about to take can care of the limitation because behind the scene microsoft is taking care for you but if you are getting your own storage account where you are keeping your resources where you are keeping your various things so you have to take care of the limitation of storage account as well so that the limitation of the storage account cannot be exceeded if it is exceeded you will face the issue of data read write operation so this why we are using here the manage the manage storage account not the unmanaged one even you don't need to worry about such thing because in the company we have been the as your administrator so those people are involved in such activity being a developer you are not involved in such things as your administrator responsible for creating the virtual machine to manage the virtual machine for you 
you always get the virtual machine ready from the infra people but you should at least have the understanding how the virtual machine has been created and how you can manage it so that's why from the perspective of developer i'm teaching you the things over here then you can enable here auto shutdown sometimes it happens you are using the virtual machine only for development purpose so basically in the office you will work from 9 to 6 9 to 7 after the 9 to 6 you will not doing anything in the at the virtual machine level so you can enable the auto shutdown automatically at 7 o'clock it will shut down but being a server our website will available always so we never enable the auto shutdown because our website should be live 24 into 7 hours then you can define the backup so for the backup developers are not involved system administrator are involved for taking the regular backup for doing the patching as well so these are the responsibility of the administrator now let's click on the advanced option where you can define any extension if you are willing to install so extension can be here let's say a antivirus it can be extension for widget studio it can be extension so these are some access software which can be installed later on also don't worry so i'm just going to close it here let's move to the next the next one is here we have been the tags so tags we use here for tagging purpose uh, let's say to apply the label so here let's say you are working in a subscription and this virtual machine let's say i'm creating for the development environment so i mention here the environment as development and it can have multiple tags also so i can add a one more tag here let's say here i can mention the project so this virtual machine i'm creating for project xyz so this is the way how i can apply the label and by looking at the label i can understand this resource belongs to which environment and this resource belongs to which project even you can have another style as well so it, so it is a way to grouping the things grouping the resources now let's move further now let's review all the settings all the changes we have done so far and this would be the pricing for point 2507 inr per hour so you can calculate for 1 minute how much you have to pay for a 1 minute you have to pay only in pesa even for for 5 minutes also you have to pay in the pesa so you, so you can calculate so they will charge only 4 rupee 0.2507 pesa for 1 hour uses of this virtual machine so depending upon the size the pricing will change so let me click on the create button to create the virtual machine so when i will click on the create button it will take few minutes behind the scene to set up everything for us so please wait so our virtual machine has been created now let's look at what the various things it's created so this is my virtual machine containing here let's look inside the resource group this is my resource group dnt101 and if you will look inside this resource group it's created here a vnet that is a virtual network virtual machine ip address network security group the network interface then this is the disk so these are the various resources associated with the virtual machine and all are the part of the this resource group dnt101 let me open the virtual machine resources and here you can also find out what are the various thing we having so this virtual machine belongs to the resource group dnt101 status is running here this is a location where it has been created this is a subscription and based upon the subscription they will charge they will provide the invoice as well to you this is the operating system i'm using here this is the size of the virtual machine two virtual cpu 4 gb ram this is the public ip and this is the virtual network dns we can configure right now we have not configured over there from here you can connect to the virtual machine you can restart you can stop you can delete okay so these are the various option are available to access your virtual machine so let me connect to the virtual machine so there is option hey connect i'm using your rdp option so i'm using your rdp to connect my virtual machine and make sure when you're using the rdp you are having a public ip if you don't have the public ip address you cannot take the rdp so we already enabled the public ip and rdp port so that's why i'm getting here public ip address and this is the rdp port 3389 so i'm just going to log in here sys admin then password dnt and the red 123456718 then remember the password then enter it so this time it has been connected without any issue so first time machine takes time it is opening the server manager because it's a windows server machine 